I didn't want to have to record something like this again so soon. But here we are. Um, a Facebook friend of mine, um, who I should have spoken to more because apparently he was a man of great character, uh, was shot and killed by police for stopping a mass shooting. I'm not joking. Um, and I think it's valuable to bring up some of the facts of the situation. Because what he did was he told everybody to get inside while it happened, and while a man had fired a bunch of bullets in the direction of cops, I believe people were injured. Uh, I know they ran for cover, but I know that the bullets were basically going through a ton of nearby buildings. He would have survived if it wasn't for the government. I feel like this is going to start being common. Especially with people in, quote, liberty and anarchy circles. I feel like it was bound to happen. Honestly. Because there's a lot of problems with the state. And they don't like it when people do their jobs for them. I remember Ron Paul had a quote on his desk that he would have facing outward to whoever saw his desk, whether that be somebody who was having a meeting with him or, uh, you know, just generally uh, people who might take pictures of it, any, anybody. And that, that, that placard was, don't steal, the government hates competition. That's basically it, I think. I think the government just doesn't like competition. Because they bust into every situation as though they're the only ones who can solve a problem. And they're so often demonstrably fucking not. I figure it's a good idea to put this in context, too. Because there was another similar instance that happened. That was the shooting of Jamel Roberson. Uh, so what happened was, I'm going to just read some bullshit for you here. Um, police fatally shoot black security guard who detained shooting suspect. When police arrived after reports of a shooting over the weekend, this is on NPR.org, at a bar outside Chicago, witnesses say Jamel Roberson, a 26-year-old security guard who worked there, had already subdued the alleged assailant in the parking lot, pinning him to the ground. Adam Harris, who was at Manny's Blue Bar in Robbins at the time of the incident on Sunday, told WGN-TV that Roberson was holding somebody on the ground with his knee in his back, with his gun in his back. When officers from neighboring Midton Midlothian got there Sunday, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, fuck it. Midlothian police, I'm going to go with that, Chief Daniel Delaney said that that's when one of his officers encountered a subject with a gun and shot him according to a statement given to the media. But the subject was Roberson. Not the suspect in the bar shooting. Now, that's just part of that article. Uh, there's more to it. Because... If you go a little bit deeper, here's something from CNN. No charges will be filed against a white police officer who fatally shot a black security guard at a suburban Chicago bar in 2018. 
Almost two years after an Illinois police officer fatally shot a black man working as a security guard, the state's attorney's office announced no criminal charges will be filed against the officers. Quote, after an extensive and thorough review of the police-involved shooting resulting in the 2018 death of Jamel Robeson, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, CCSAO, has concluded that the totality of the evidence is insufficient to support criminal charges against Midlothian P Police Officer Ian Covey. End quote. The news release from the Attorney's Office stated. So... There were no charges against those cops. Years later, they they just dropped the case. A good guy with a gun was doing his fucking job. And instead of asking any fucking questions, the police came and killed him. That's the status quo. That's the status fucking quo. His name was Duncan Lemp. Shot to death in his own home while sleeping. And even if he wasn't sleeping, the charges that they had racked up, that they said he was so evil that they had to roll up on him like that, having a gun is a felon. For some shit that went down when he was a child or a teen or something. Yeah, that's terrible. That's terrifying. That definitely warrants that use of force. Breonna Taylor, they were after her boyfriend. And instead of being rational, they fucking pumped the place full of bullets going through the walls and into neighboring apartments in this tiny, shitty apartment complex. I mean, it's better than the place I live in terms of amenities, so <laughs> that should tell you something. But ultimately, uh, the incident resulted in uh, Briona, who was completely innocent, being taken down and eventually dying. There's now a law in that particular city that no-knock raids are not allowed. The rest of the country thanks you. Wait. The rest of the country is unaffected. <laughs> Her name was Brianna Taylor. His name was Eric Garner choked to death for selling loose cigarettes. His name was Philando Castile. Lawfully advised an officer he had a weapon and was shot for it. His name was James Crawford III, who had a BB gun in a Walmart that sold them and was returning it to its shelf. His name was Kelly Thomas, for the heinous crime of allegedly stealing somebody's mail. They beat him for many minutes, while he screamed for his mother and father, because he had mental issues. He was hella neurodivergent before that term became a thing. And they beat him until he died in the hospital of injuries that he could not recover from. No charges. Pretty much nobody is getting charged. Nobody. Fucking nobody. And then, of course, more recently, there's the George Floyd situation. A knee on his neck and another on his back. He couldn't breathe and he was right next to an exhaust pipe and it provided the perfect storm for another at the time, non-violent life to be snuffed. Christopher Rope had a Wiimote in his hand because he was playing fucking video games. 
shot in his doorway. Never posed a threat. He was a fucking child. Tamir Rice, a BB gun. Many such cases. I'm bringing these up just as off the top of my head examples of obvious bullshit that the police did and got away with. The only police officer that I know of in any of these instances who has seen any level of actual legal consequences beyond losing their job and having to fucking uh, move and find one in another department so they could go fuck up other people's lives. The only consequence has been for Derek Chauvin and so many right-wingers are fucking masturbating online saying, uh, free him, release him, reverse the charges, appeal, appeal. Chauvin did nothing wrong. Because they're a bunch of psychophants. Fucking hero-worshipping government whores. 100% period. And I wanted to say all that to preface a concept here. And that concept is decentralized law. But first, let me get into this subject. This is from the Free Thought Project. Hero, liberty activist, killed by police after stopping mass shooter who just killed a cop. Arveda Colorado. On Monday, a deranged gunman, 59-year-old Ronald Troika, began what was about to be a deadly mass shooting. His first victim would be Arveda police officer Gordon Beasley. And according to the reports that evening, his next victim would be liberty activist and friend to many members of the Free Thought Project, including this author, Johnny Hurley. But it didn't quite unfold like the original reports claimed. Hurley was actually the hero who stopped the gunman, and when other officers arrived on the scene, one of them killed the hero. Johnny Hurley was an outspoken activist for freedom and peace, and he spent the last decade or more of his life seeking those goals for the world. His dedication to the preservation of life was so strong that it actually cost him his own. According to multiple witnesses, when the gunman Troika began shooting, Hurley did not hesitate and ran straight into danger, eliminating the threat and saving countless lives. Quote, he did not hesitate. He didn't stand there and think about it. He totally heard the gunfire, went to the door, saw the shooter, and immediately ran in that direction, witness Bill Troyana said. Quote, I just want to make sure his family knows how heroic he was, end quote. He turned back and looked toward everybody at the restaurant and told us that he is coming, that he is coming back, and that we should get inside, another witness who asked not to be identified said, quote, I ran to the back of the store, closer to the alley, kind of nooked myself in a corner just to feel safe, end quote. Mr. Hurley shot him. I think I heard six shots from his gun, maybe five, Troyano said. To those who witnessed the shooting, Hurley was hailed as a hero. He had stopped the deadly threat and saved many lives in the process. But his time as a living hero was only brief. Moments after saving countless lives, Hurley would be killed by police who likely mistook him for the shooter. Arveda Police Chief Link Strait said in a news conference Tuesday that Hurley was, quote, a true hero who likely disrupted what could have been a larger loss of life, end quote but would not say it was police who shot him. Though police refused to confirm it was them who shot Hurley, Denver 7 Chief Investigator Tony Kovaleski reported that they confirmed through three informed ranking sources, including two law enforcement sources, that it was indeed a cop who ended the hero's life. Hurley's Facebook profile is filled with statements from friends showing just how big of a light he's shown in this world. His death is a true tragedy and will leave a void in the activism community. There's more. I'll include a link. 
point is, yet again, a situation involving police escalation resulted in the loss of innocent life. Of life that had committed no crime, and in this case had stopped crimes from being committed. This is not the land of the free, nor is it the home of the brave, because every brave person has the risk of, because of the lack of freedom, dying or losing a significant amount of theirs. It's a severe problem. It's a problem that police are trained primarily in escalation. It's a problem that they're trained often by foreign troops who are trained in war in order to make war on the streets. They don't see people. They don't see human beings, sapient, living creatures. What they see is targets. That's, that's what they see. They see things to escalate with and then maybe, maybe take a breather and not escalate for a short bit. Only to escalate if anything goes sideways. That's what they are. People can't be people. Citizens can't be citizens. They're just numbers. They're civilians that could be casualties the next moment. The whole notion of tax cattle where we're stamped at birth with a social security number that is used to track us universally, the whole idea of the state as it is, that's what leads to situations like this. Fucking people like Derek Grossman, or whatever, David Grossman. Dave, yeah, Dave Grossman, that's what he goes by. People like Dave Grossman, who train people to get off on the notion of killing. So that they can sleep well at night after they come real good. I've done two videos on this channel that were really solid against cops. I've done Police Have Waged War on You, and I've done Yeah, All Cops Are Bad. And neither of these have significantly broke out, even though I would say that they're relatively high quality. Um, because most people, even when they're sent this, because I know that a lot of people were, they're not interested. They ignore things. Right? They're not interested in hearing the negative truth about the institutions upon which they relied. And because of that, there are large amounts of innocent people who have died needlessly. Because most people avoid politics, most people don't care, most people aren't active enough to oppose the structures that cause this. Hell, right now, there are so many people licking that boot about this particular fucking story. Johnny Hurley is being accused of being an alt-right, <laughs> being a conspiracy theorist. Ooh, well, let's insert Q into this. Let's insert anything we can into this to justify the fact that we're shitting on an anarchist who died because people who don't support the system are fucking casualties of the system and those who justify the system have to write them off. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be for every single one of us. Every single time something like this happens, they are going to try to find a way to write it off. It's sick. 
In fact, you know, it's not sick. The body of the state is perfectly healthy. It's supposed to be this parasitic, violent, and cruel. That's the way it is. For now. I'm not going to say who it is. But I'm in a Discord conversation with somebody. And the same sort of stock and standard things are coming up. And I don't blame him. I think he's like a, a kid or something. The whole point, though, that I think is valuable to bring up is that the same questions he asks are the ones drilled into his head by the school system, by media, etc. You know? <laughs> like, government is needed for survival. And why? Because we need criminal justice. I said there is no criminal justice now. That's a liberal myth to justify the state. And he seems very convinced that criminals will go unpunished. I don't blame him. I used to think the same way. Because that's what was told to me. But let me be clear and bring up the Robert Higgs quote I brought up. Anarchists did not try to carry out genocide against the Armenians in Turkey. They did not deliberately starve millions of Ukrainians. They did not create a system of death camps to kill Jews, gypsies, and Slavs in Europe. They did not firebomb scores of large German and Japanese cities and drop nuclear bombs on two of them. They did not carry out a great leap forward that killed scores of millions of Chinese. They did not attempt to kill everybody with any appreciable education in Cambodia. They did not launch one aggressive war after another. They did not implement their trade sanctions that killed perhaps 500,000 Iraqi children. In debates between anarchists and statists, the burden of proof clearly should rest on those who place their trust in the state. Anarchy's mayhem is wholly conjectural. The state's mayhem is undeniably, factually horrendous. The whole notion here is that the state shouldn't be killing a thousand plus people a year on purpose. It shouldn't be this strong. And the fact that it is, the fact that it has this power, the fact that it can keep on fucking doing it without being held accountable, that's a huge fucking problem. And until it stops, until the state is gone, we will not be free. Johnny Hurley was an anarchist. He had rejected his previous rightism, and he was happy to finally own himself. I was cut short by people who think they own him. It was fine that he wasn't alive anymore, according to them. That's why they're not even bringing up who fucking did it. Because they think they own us. This is how it's going to be until we fucking free ourselves. Until we get out from under the yoke of this state, this is how it's going to fucking be. That's why I hate all the fighting between us. Because we need all the hands on deck we can get in order to fucking win this. That's why I hate the state for dividing us constantly, for keeping us constantly pushing at each other along their lines. So that we never have the energy to fucking rid ourselves of them. It's intentional and it's malicious. I'm tired of reading stories like this. In decentralized law, he would not be dead. In decentralized law... we wouldn't have lost a freedom fighter. Hell, he just 
avenged a cop and probably saved others, and the cop's response to that was violence. Because they only know escalation, and they don't know how to be human when they choose that job. And the ones who do find their way out as soon as fucking possible, because they realize very quickly that reform is not going to fucking happen. The ones who are seasoned, the ones who've been there for a long time, they had to bite the bullet and acquiesce to corruption many times. Especially in urban places. Places with a huge amount of poor people to over-police. A huge amount of racism that they can excuse. A huge amount of classism that they can push as their primary method of getting a prison labor force. Because these people can't afford bail. These people can't afford attorneys. These people can't afford shit. They can't even afford a better place that's not near so many drug dealers. A better place that's not near those drug dealers because it's designed poorly. It's designed to be oppressive. And it's getting worse by the day. The entire system is set up to enslave, entrap, control, and kill. It's not criminal justice. They say no justice, no peace. There was never either. This isn't anything new. I hope for a day when nobody has to make videos like this. Or at least when they're very rare... Because heroes are not seen as the same as villains. Because let me be clear, this is all the result of gun control rhetoric. This is all the result of statism that is allegedly benevolent, ending in suffering. If the common person had gun ownership and bearing arms normalized, and if everybody did it because everybody could, you wouldn't be able to say that you shot this person because he had a gun. It wouldn't be possible because everybody has a gun. So what, you're going to shoot everybody? You better bring a big gun. And that's the other thing about statism, is that it directly enforces hypocrisy. This guy had a gun. Oh no, let's not analyze the situation at all and very quickly shoot him with our guns. If cops weren't heralded as some sort of higher caste, those ones wouldn't be alive either. We need a better system because we need a system that we use to control our own lives. Not that is used by other people to control us. Until the system respects our sapience, our autonomy, our being enough to not treat us like numbers that they can just immediately turn to zero whenever they fucking feel like it. Or numbers that they can use to make more numbers relatively easily. With their prison system. With their military and intelligence industrial complexes. I mean, make no mistake, foreign policy mirrors this. And a lot of cops are veterans. For a reason, that's what they've been trained to do. Hurt people and break shit. They're not wondering about, like, whether or not the target is valid. They have orders. They're going to carry those orders out. Plain and simple. Simple. 
I just thought I'd make a video that I thought would honor what he would have wanted people to say. I can't speak for him. Nobody can. And he can't speak for himself anymore. But I'm pretty sure that a guy who held police as accountable as he did would want somebody and everybody else to hold police accountable for this shit and for everything that he can't do anymore. For all the victims. For every single person the state has wronged. For the structural injustice that causes us to blindly accept this without massive, massive amounts of change in our lives to justify the switch from the statist paradigm to a freedom mindset. For all the people that have been killed, brutalized, enslaved. For every single person out there who is being oppressed by a government right now. We need to step back, fight the real enemy. That means not the left or the right, but the top. The authoritarians. And we need to focus. Because a lot of shit is going down in rapid fucking succession. And make no mistake. There is a time limit on our ability to smash the state.